my loves, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you. It's been a while since we did a book haul. You know, New Year, I wanted to add a few books to my shelves that I've been meaning to get to for a while. And there's nothing quite like the smell of a new book to cheer you up as well, I find. So yes, I'm very excited to be doing a book haul today. And this video has been very kindly sponsored by ShopTagger, who you may have heard me talk about before. And I have used ShopTagger before for clothing, mostly fashion and beauty. And it, for some reason, it never really occurred to me to use it for other stuff like books and also baby bits, lifestyle stuff, home stuff. But anyway, if you didn't know, ShopTagger is a really helpful app or Chrome extension that you can use to save money, essentially, and shop a bit smarter with your online shopping. So you can do that two ways through ShopTagger. One is getting notified about price changes and drops on your saved items. And the other way is they use Clever Tech to make sure you don't miss out on coupon codes as well. Um, and just the other day, I saved 10% on a rather hefty uh, baby order. So anyway, I'm gonna show you very quickly how it works on screen. So it's as easy as going to the Chrome web store and adding the extension to your browser. And I will leave a direct link to download it down below. And then when you're on a compatible site, and there are a lot of them, you'll get this little button pop up where you can save the item and make sure you get notifications when there's any price change. And you can choose to have these via email or straight to your mobile. And you can save items straight from your mobile as I'm showing you here by downloading the ShopTag app. That will give you instructions as to how to enable the button. And then you'll click this icon down here and then click the shop tagger button and your item will be saved. You can organize your saved items into lists as I'm showing you here. So I have lists for all sorts of things, books, clothes, baby bits. And as I mentioned before, when there might be coupons available, shop tagger will let you know when shopping on your desktop. When you click on your basket, it will kind of pop up. Finally, you can now get cash back on various purchases straight to your PayPal. So it's a super useful tool. It will definitely help you save money and I will leave a link to shop tagger down below. Okay, so let's get into the book haul now. There are also three books that haven't arrived yet, which I am going to talk you through. That may be a little out there for a haul, but I wanted to include them in this video. So I'm going to talk you through them um, and I hope you don't mind. But anyway, let's begin. First up, we have Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I'm really, really excited about this. I think it's a proper space opera. I believe this is actually a standalone novel and he also has quite a famous series as well that people love him for too. He's a pretty big name in contemporary sci-fi and I have never read any of his books so I'm very excited for this. The Financial Times says that this is superior stuff tackling big themes which sounds like my kind of thing but anyway the blurb says the last remnants of the human race left a dying earth desperate to find a new home. Following their ancestors star maps they discovered the greatest treasure of a past age a world terraformed and prepared for human life. But all is not right in this new Eden. The planet is not waiting for them, pristine and unoccupied. New masters have turned it from a refuge into mankind's worst nightmare. Now two civilizations are on a collision course and must fight to survive. As the fate of humanity hangs in the balance, who are the true heirs of this new earth? So yes, very intrigued by this one and very excited for it too. Next, we have a very different book. This is The Old Ways by Robert McFarlane. I said in my top 2020 books video that I wanted to read more Robert McFarlane. He is a nature writer. I think this one is kind of a travel book as well. And what I loved about the book of his that I read, Underlands, is it Underlands or Underland? Was that it really transported me to other places, which right now, we really really need so I'm hoping that this book will do a similar thing for me. Um, so it's following the tracks, hollowways, drove roads and sea paths that form part of a vast ancient network of routes crisscrossing the British Isles and beyond. Robert McFarlane discovers Lost World, a landscape of the feet and the mind, of pilgrimage and ritual, of, go of stories and ghosts and above all of the places and journeys which inspire and inhabit our imaginations. So I'm really excited for this one. Next we have Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Another sort of nature-based book, really just enjoying um, nature-based books at the minute. I find them comforting and calming, which is nice. So Kimmerer is 
a member of the citizen Potawatomi Nation. Apologies if I am pronouncing that incorrectly. And she's also a professor of environmental and forest biology. So she combines these two things in her writing. Um, and I've heard lots of really good things about this book. Jane Goodall said of it, an extraordinary book showing how the factual objective approach of science can be enriched by the ancient knowledge of the indigenous people. Um, it is the way she captures beauty that I love the most. The images will stay with you long after you read the last page. So sounds definitely like something I would enjoy and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. Next we have a new book, a newer book. Um, this one is a hardback obviously and this is Pew by Catherine Lacey. I first heard Jeff Vandermeer talk about this on his Twitter. I believe he really liked it but I think it's also just been nominated for the Dylan Thomas Prize I think and I believe I said at some point that I did want to follow the Dylan Thomas Prize a little bit more closely than I have in the past. This is Pew. First of all, I just love the cover of it. One Sunday morning, a mysterious silent figure is found sleeping in a church in an unnamed American town. The congregants call this amnesiac Pew and seek to uncover who they are, their age, their gender, their race, their intentions. Are they an orphan or something worse? What terrible trouble is Pew running from and why won't they speak? This small town is quickly undone by Pew's terrifying silence. What remains is a foreboding, provocative and amorphous fable about the world today. Our borders and our boundaries, our fears and our woes. I think it would be hard not to be intrigued by that blurb. Very much looking forward to reading this. Next we have Tar Baby by Toni Morrison. I want to continue working my way through her work. Um, and I also ordered Paradise, which hasn't arrived yet. So, into a white millionaire's Caribbean mansion comes Jadine, a sophisticated graduate of the Sorbonne, art historian, a black American now living in Paris and Rome. Then there's Sun, a criminal on the run, uneducated, violent, contemptuous, a young black American of extreme beauty from small town Florida. As Morrison follows their affair, she charts all the nuances of obligation and betrayal between blacks and whites, masters and servants, and men and women. So that is Tar Baby, and Paradise is about four young women who are brutally attacked in a convent near an all-black town in America in the mid-1970s. The inevitability of this attack and the attempts to advert to avert it lie at the heart of Paradise. It spans the birth of the civil rights movement, Vietnam, the counterculture and politics of the late 1970s, definitely manipulating past, present and future. This novel reveals the interior lives of the citizens of the town with astonishing clarity. So looking forward to reading more Morrison. I think the last thing I read by her was The Bluest Eye, which was quite some time ago now. One of those authors that I just want to read all the work of. Next up, a book of short stories, which I can't believe I've not read yet. So this is Ken Liu's Paper Menagerie and Other Stories. So these are 16 stories that invoke the magical within the mundane by turns profound, beguiling and heartbreaking. I think most of them are fantasy, maybe sci-fi as well, I don't quite know. Right up my street nonetheless. Definitely sounds like something that I would enjoy and I've heard so so many good things about this collection. Next we have another classic. This is Don DeLillo's White Noise. I have read a Don DeLillo. I read one at university and I'm just trying to remember what it was. It was Zero K, I think one of his most recent ones. And this is one of his novels from the mid 80s and is one of his more kind of established novels. And it's kind of one of those literary novels that everyone seems to have read. Um, so I thought it was about time that I read it. First of all, I just love this copy. Look how bendy that is. Oh, I love a book that bends like that. Um, anyway, Jack Gladney is the creator and chairman of Hitler Studies at the College on the Hill. This is the story of his absurd life, a life that is going well enough until a chemical spill from a rail car releases an airborne toxic event, and Jack is forced to confront his biggest fear, his own mortality. It's an effortless combination of social satire and metaphysical dilemma in which DeLillo exposes our rampant consumerism, media saturation and novelty intellectualism. I remember Zero K being a little pretentious, but I kind of enjoyed it. Um, when I say a little pretentious, I mean really pretentious. I'm intrigued um, by Don DeLillo. We'll see if I enjoy. I feel like I would put him in the same category as like David Foster Wallace, that sort of type of American writer and I feel like 
you kind of either love those writers or you really dislike them. <laughs> so we'll see how we get on. Next up we have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Stephen Graham Jones is a Blackfeet Native American author and I've seen a lot of love for this novel. Um, but I'm not quite sure what genre to put it in. I think he kind of comes under speculative <laughs> fiction in general. Um, I thought this was a horror, I think. It's always somewhere going towards a horror. Anyway, the blurb says, 10 years ago, Ricky, Gabe, Lewis and Cassidy shot some elk. It happens every year, it's been happening forever. It's the way it's always been, but this time it's different. Now, a decade later, these men are being stalked themselves, hunted bound to their heritage, bound by society, and trapped in the endless expanses of the landscape. These men and their children must face the ferocious spirit that is coming for them one at a time. Final two novels that have not arrived in time to make it into this haul, but that I did want to talk to you briefly about, just to keep you fully updated on what books I've purchased recently. Um, the first is a fantasy, and it's a pretty famous fantasy, and that is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. He is a much beloved um, contemporary fantasy author that I've never read and I feel like I need to try some see if I like it and The Way of Kings I think is one of his most famous novels I think it starts one of his most famous series so the blurb is Rosha is a world of stone and storms, uncanny tempests of incredible power sweep across the rocky terrain so frequently that they have shaped ecology and civilization alike. It has been centuries since the fall of the ten consecrated orders known as the Knights Radiant, but their shard blades and shard plate remain mystical swords and suits of armour that transform ordinary men into near invincible warriors. Men trade kingdoms for shard blades, wars were fought for them and won by them. Um, and I think... This is about one particular war. Anyway, always willing to try out a new fantasy author, so I am excited about that and to see if his novels live up to the hype. And final novel, very different, <laughs> is um, Christadora by Tim Murphy. This one comes highly recommended by the lovely Lizzie, otherwise known as Shot from the Street. I will link her up down below. She really loved this novel and I have, it's been popping up on my radar ever since. Um, she mentioned it, so I thought I would give it a go. Um, the Christadora is home to Millie and Jared, a privileged young couple with artistic ambitions. Their neighbour Hector, a Puerto Rican gay man who was once a celebrated AIDS activist but is now a lonely addict, becomes connected to Millie's and Jared's lives in ways none of them can anticipate. Moving kaleidoscopically from the Tompkins Square riots and attempts by activists to galvanise a response to the AIDS epidemic to the New York City of the future, Christadora recounts the heartbreak wrought by AIDS, illustrates the allure and de destructive power of hard drugs, and brings to life the ever-changing city itself. So that is today's final novel. Hope you all enjoyed this book haul. And also don't forget to download ShopTagger. I will leave all the links and everything that you need down below for you. Um, but yes, thank you for watching today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.